So this will be basically uh, me making my key. So here we are, key for the pre-calculus review. So go ahead and go through and, and study this. Go through, I would take this like a test. Use your notes, use your note cards, see what it is you can do. Go through those notes, start highlighting important things. And at the end, feel free to go through this video and check these answers um, and grade yourself. See how did you do on the test? What did you miss? What do you need to make sure you put on your note card? Um, so double check that. Uh, looking at this, sketching the graph, okay? The first thing is to know that we can take each of these groups and we can find a zero from them, okay? So each of those solutions is going to give us a zero. If I take that first group, set it equal to zero, the second group, and set it equal to zero, and the third group, and set it equal to zero. We get that x equals one, x equals negative four, and x equals two. So those are our three zeros, okay? So this is one, negative four, and two. So now we gotta, what we have to do is kind of figure out beginning and ending behaviors. So what is the power of this function? Some people go, well, there's three x's, so x cubed. No, what you have to keep in mind is that even though there are only three x's, this has one, this has two, and this has three. Because when I were multiply all this out, this would have one group, this would have two groups, so two more x's, this would have three groups, so three more x's. So this is basically an x to the fifth function with an a that is positive. How do I know it's positive? Because there's no number out here. This is where the a would be. If there were, so basically our a is positive 1. If there was a negative out there, that would change the beginning and end behaviors. Okay? So an odd function with a positive a, it's going to start by going up right, and end, or I guess by going down. I should follow my notes correctly here. So it's going to start by going down, and it's going to end after that last zero by going back up. So what does it do in the middle? Well, I know it crosses at negative 4. The issue is, though, to look at the power. So at negative 4, that is a double solution or a double root. The, the book called it a multi, um, <laughs> what was it, a, a multiplicity of 2. That means it's going to act like an x squared right there. It's not going to go through it. It's going to come up to that zero and bounce off like a parabola. The next zero it gets to is at the one. So what does it do? As it comes, and I don't know what it's doing here. I don't know how deep to make it. It's not the point. But as I'm coming up to the one, right? What's the power? Well, that's a single. So it's going to go through there like a line. All right, well, I just figured out a mistake because I was like going, well, this last one's supposed to go through like an S, but it's supposed to come back up. So I messed up somewhere. I'm hoping some of you are screaming at your screens because this is not X to the fifth. Mm -hmm. It's always the simple things. One plus two plus three. This is really an X to the sixth. So our beginning and ending behavior is a little off. So what's our beginning and ending behavior? With an even function that's positive, how about up and up? That will help. So sorry about that, but hopefully you caught that as well. So at negative 4, again, it bounces off. At positive 1, it goes through. And then as it comes back, it goes through this one, but it actually goes through kind of like a cubic. So it has this curved S shape as it goes through. Now, is this perfect? No, it's a sketch. But what am I looking for? I'm looking for beginning and ending behavior. So since this is six and this is even, that gives us our beginning and ending. I'm looking for the three zeros, one, two, three. And then I'm looking at behavior at each of those zeros. And that is from this being a double root, this being a triple root. That just tells me how the graph behaves at that root. So there's a lot to this, but keep in mind I'm grading this by hand, so little mistakes, I can kind of clean those up. This specifically says use synthetic division. So I do want to verify that we can use synthetic division, so I am expecting you to do this question synthetically. Divided by 3x 
minus 4. Okay. If you do this with, um, oh, I'm messing up on this. This is the long division, isn't it? So I did mess this up. Okay, let's try this again. Let's follow the directions. Honestly, I don't. I have synthetic, so I'll allow it. I was really wanting the long division on this one. So if you do it as synthetic, it wouldn't bother me. Then what we're doing is we're factoring out a 3x minus 4 as a group, which means that group equals 0, which means x equals f4 divided by 3, 4 thirds. So if you're doing this with synthetic, you have to start by solving for x, and we're going to check x equals 4 thirds and see what we get. So we take our coefficients, 3, negative 4, negative 3, positive 4, and we go down, and we go up. 3 times 4 thirds is 4. Down has to make 0. 0 times 4 thirds is 0. Down makes negative 3. Multiplying up makes negative 4. Zeroed out. This factored completely, right? So what are we left with? Now, I'm not factoring, so I'm not actually writing this group out. This actually got divided away. So what we end up with is, because this was x to the third, this was x squared, this was x to the first, and this was our constant. This 3 that's left is 3x squared. We factored out an x. We divided out an x, which made that go away. And then we have 0x squared, so I don't need to write that, minus... What is that? 3x? And that would be it. Just double checking my work. Like I said, if you want to do this one with long division, it wouldn't bother me. I'm going to show that one as well. With synthetic, what we'd be doing is dividing this by this. I keep saying synthetic. By long division. So we would say 3x cubed divided by 3x is just x squared. Or we are saying 3x times what makes 3x cubed. Another way of thinking about it. But then we go over here and we check. So we multiply that x squared. gives us 3x cubed minus 4x squared. Multiply and subtract. So that becomes minus 3x cubed plus 4x squared. That's kind of cool because this zeroes out and this zeroes out. So really all we're left with is what? minus 3x plus 4. So now I'm going to divide that same 3x but into this. So 3x times what is negative 3x? Or negative 3x divided by 3x is negative 1. We check it. Multiplying that gives us negative 3x plus 4. Multiply and subtract. Bringing that over makes that positive 3x and minus 4. So what did I mess up with on the other one? Hmm. So I got x squared minus 1 here. Let me double check my other work. Okay. See, this is where we get tricky because these basically hmm, are both divisible. Okay, so I messed up. This was x to the first, so now that x is x to the zero, so that x should be gone. Okay, but This happens when you do synthetic and there's a fraction. What you have to do is divide out what these two have in common. So if I divided out that 3, that would leave us with x squared minus 1. So that would be the right answer. That would have been the wrong answer. That would have been probably at least a quarter point off, and then this would be the correct answer. I would honestly suggest if you are dealing with fractions, just use the long division. But um, either way, you can get that same answer, x squared minus 1. Now, how do I do synthetic division with this? Well, it's really easy. This is what our x equals. x equals 4. f of 4 is f of x. x is 4. So I'm going to set up the house, but, and we're going to put all of these coefficients in there, and we're going to put x equals 4. When you're doing this, make sure there aren't any zeros like we had on the quiz. So this starts with x to the fifth x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, 2nd, 1st, and then there is no x. So this actually has all the terms. But if it went from x cubed to x to the 1st, you would have to have a 0 in the middle. Um, this one didn't, so that's kind of convenient. 
All we do is just take these coefficients, put them in the box, take this 4, put it on the outside, just like this, and we do synthetic. 2, 2 times 4 is 8, negative 1, times 4 is about negative 4, negative 6, times 4 is negative 24, negative 4 times 4, negative 16, negative 10, multiplying that makes that negative 40, and so negative 48. What did we just do? Well, basically, we plugged in a 4 into the equation. This remainder is what would happen if we plug that into the 2x to the 5th minus 9x to the 4th minus 2x to the 3rd plus 20x squared. What is that now? Plus 6x minus 8. If we replace each of those x's with a 4, plus 20 times 4 squared, plus 6 times 4 minus 8, all of this would turn into negative 48. So that is basically a very quick way of plugging numbers into complicated equations. Synthetic does that for us. Okay. So yes, you could technically do all this manually, but keep in mind, I'm doing all of this without a calculator. This is the section without a calculator. So we're looking at, what is that, negative 48? So where am I at? Right here. Switch pens, that didn't help. About f of 4 equals negative 48. Find all the zeros given that. So I know that this function, 3 is 1. I know that x equals 3 is a 0. I want to factor that out. The easiest way for me is to do that synthetically. 2x squared minus 1x, I'm sorry, 2x cubed minus 1x squared minus 18x plus 9 are my coefficients. x equals 3. Bringing that down, we get 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15. Negative 3 times 3 is not. Negative 9 zeroes it out. So we just factored out x equals 3. Well, we factored out what an x minus 3 technically, but they want the solutions on this one. What am I left with? Well, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Now, I could run this through all the p's and q's, but the idea is that what's left is factorable. I can do this with AC factoring. A times C, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Factors of 6 that make 5, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Both of these could make a 5. But it cannot be 2 and 3 because I need it to multiply to make a negative 6. So really, I need it to be a negative 1 and a positive 6. We take the 5x and we split it. Bring the rest down. What do these two have in common? Leaving us with 2x minus 1. What do these two have in common? Leaving us with 2x minus 1. Factoring out the 2x minus 1 that these two groups have in common, I'm left with x plus 3. Setting each of these equal to 0, I get x equals 1 half, and x equals negative 3. So x equals 3, x equals negative 3, and x equals 1 half. That's the answer for all the zeros. If they wanted it completely factored, it would have been x minus 3, 2x minus 1, and x plus 3. But in this situation, this is all that we're asking for is the zeros. How do I do i to the 54th? Well, we pull out groups of 4. So I do, what is that, 54 divided by 4? Goes in... 13 times? Don't make that 13 and 2 fourths. <laughs> what this means is that i to the 54th is i to the 4th 13 times with 
two i's remaining. This would be what? 52 plus two more, 54. This is just a way of rewriting it. Why does this help? Because i to the fourth is basically one. One to the 13th power is not 13. That's just one times one times one times one is one. And so I have my handy dandy table for the i's where I know that i is the square root of negative one, i squared is negative one, i to the third is negative i, and i to the fourth is one. So I'm left with i squared. I missed that on here, so i squared. And so i squared is negative one. I'm going to do the same thing with 121. 121 divided by four, I'm pulling out the groups of four. Why? Because every four make a one. They don't make a difference. They just divide away. So that goes in, what is that, 30 times? So 120 leaving us with one. So this is i to the fourth 30 times, which doesn't matter because it's a bunch of ones, with one remaining, with one i left over. And so our answer is just i. If you put the square root of negative 1, I would not mark you wrong, but really we just leave it as i in the situation. How do I rationalize this? Well, the easiest way is that if I just have an i being multiplied on the bottom, I can multiply the top and the bottom by i. i on the top distributes, making that 3i plus i squared. On the bottom would become 4i squared. This is not a complete answer because what? i squared is the same thing as negative 1. So on the top, really, what we're left with is if you put 3i minus 1, it's not wrong, we just don't normally write it that way, over, is that negative 4? If I clean this up, the way I would do it is put the negative 1 first, plus 3i over negative 4. And then technically, we don't normally leave negatives in the denominator also. So I bring that negative up and distribute it to make that positive 1 minus 3i over positive 4. I would probably accept either of these answers, but the one on the right would be kind of a cleaner way of writing it. Bottom, how do I clear this? I cannot just multiply this by i. Why not? It won't get rid of the i. It'll get rid of that i, but it'll create another one. So that doesn't work. How do I clear out a 3 minus i? We use what's called the conjugate. To get rid of a 3 minus i, we use a 3 plus i. Distributing the top, we get 12 minus, or what is that, plus 4i minus 9i, and then minus 3i squared. On the bottom, we get 9 plus 3i minus 3i minus i squared. We are going to clean this up, but take all the i squareds first and replace them with what? Negative 1. So really, this becomes... 12 plus 3, because 3 times negative 1 is 3. 12 plus 3, this becomes a plus 3, is 15. Minus 5i, that's combining the like terms here. Down here, this becomes a 9 minus negative 1, about plus 1. 9 plus 1 is 10, and the i's in the middle cancel out. Now this is not a complete answer, 15 minus 5i over 10. The top and bottom are both divisible by 5, leaving us with 3 minus i over 2. And that's how I would leave that. Sketch a graph of these following functions. So we should be comfortable with this by now. This is a parabola with an h and a k. So I know that this parabola will be shifted over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
and up one, two, three, four, five, six. Our A is negative, so I know it opens downward. That's not enough though. I actually want the X intercepts. Well, how will I do that? Well, I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to solve set y equal to 0. Take that g of x and replace it with a 0. Solving that, negative 6 equals negative 2 x minus 10 squared divided by the negative 2. 3 is equal to, what is that, x minus 10 squared. Now I can undo the squaring by square rooting. So I get plus or minus the square root of 3 is equal to x minus 10. Add in 10. Those do not combine. They're not like terms. I get x is equal to 10 plus or minus root 3. This creates two points. These are the x values where y equals 0. So where will this graph cross? I'm not exactly sure, but at two points... And the first one will be at 10 minus root 3 comma 0. And the other one would be at 10 plus root 3 comma 0. Those would be our two x-intercepts. The y-intercept, that's where x equals 0. So I take this equation and I replace a 0 in place of the x. So if I do, let's see. G of 0 would be negative 2 times 0 minus 10 squared plus 6. Negative 2 times 100 plus 6. Negative 200 plus 6. Negative 194. So this graph does cross way down here at some point at 0, comma, negative 194. And that would be the y-intercept. We can do these. We can figure these things out manually without a calculator. I'm not saying they're pretty, but I want to verify that you could do this without a calculator. On B, how do I get that function if it's not in vertex form? Well, we complete the square first. Taking these two terms, what makes x squared minus 10x? How about x minus 5 squared? That is just half of our b term. And then bringing it up, negative 5 times negative 5 is plus 25. How do I balance that? I can add 25 to both sides, but I'm going to go ahead and just add a 25 and a minus a 25 just to keep it all on this side of the side. So f of x equals x minus 5 squared. We use for that 25 as part of this group to make that. And so what's left there is the 6 minus 25 or negative 19. There's our vertex. Negative 5. And somewhere down here at negative 19. This graph is opening upward. Where is it crossed? I don't know, but we can find out. How? Taking the equation, setting it equal to 0. Adding the 19. Square root it, plus or minus the square root of 19 is equal to x minus 5. Adding 5 to both sides, x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 19. Those are our x-intercepts. x is equal to 5 plus the square root of 19, 0. 5 minus the square root of 19, 0. Those would be those two points. Where is the y-intercept? Well, that's where we do f of 0. I can actually just do that with the original equation. So what's 0 squared? Minus 10 times 0 plus 6. If you didn't see that, you could plug it into this other function, but ultimately what? Our y-intercept 
is where x is 0 and y is 6. Now let's play with circles. We have an h and a k. All right, so I will go up here real quick and just add our notes on this for what? Uh, f of x equal a x minus h squared plus k. So make sure you're reviewing how to graph that, our horizontal shift, our vertical shift. Okay. h is the horizontal. k is the vertical. And the horizontal is the one that is opposite. On this one, I'm dealing with where H is still the horizontal, K is still the vertical, but this time they are both opposite. Well, this one doesn't really have an H, so this is really like X minus zero squared. The horizontal shift, our center, is going to have an H of 0. So our center at HK, since there's no number with the X, our center is at 0. The Y has a negative 3, so it'll be a positive 3. That's where the center of this is. At 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to need more space. <laughs> So how about, let's see, I'll just stick it down here. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. What's the radius? Well, the 49 is radius squared. So square rooting that, the radius is 7. So from that center, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 down. And draw your circle. That's what I'll be looking for. This second one requires a little more work. I need to group the x's. Group the y's. And on each, complete the square. So this would be x minus 5 squared. To complete that, we add 25. Now, I'm not going to add and subtract this time because I really want the numbers on the other side, so I'm going to add the 25 on the right side. This one will be y plus 2 squared. 2 times 2, we need a 4 there, so I'm going to need a 4 over here. Uh, 29 plus 9. I must have messed that up in my head. <laughs> Oh, that's why. That's a 3. So it's not right. Yell at your screen a little louder so they don't make these mistakes. All right. So this makes 29 plus 3, still not much better, is 32. So this graph has a center at 5, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2. And a radius uh, the square root of 32. Do not leave it as a square root of 32. Simplify that. 32 is, what is that, 4 times 8? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So our radius is 4 square root of 2. I'm not exactly sure how far that is right and left. I know it's between 5 and 6. So I could kind of sketch it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I'm not as worried about that. But this distance right here is basically 4 root 2. Find all the zeros using factoring techniques. This has four terms. You should know how to factor by grouping. These both have 3x squared in common, leaving us with, what is that, x minus 2. Oh, bugger, I made this wrong. I meant for that to have a 3x as well. 
All right. So if this had a 3x, so I'll have to fix that, but yours will be wrong. Factoring out the minus. See, that just isn't what I wanted. I'll just change that 6. I know you're like, thanks, just change that to a 2 for it to work. Because the one on the test, I'll make sure factors by grouping have already been going through that. But factoring this out, we factor out a negative 1, leaving us with an x minus 2. That's what I'm wanting you to be able to do on this. Okay. So now these two groups have what in common? The x minus 2, factoring that out, leaves us with 3x squared minus 1. And how do I find the zeros now? Set each group equal to 0. For the first one, x equals 2. For the second one, if I add 3x squared equals 1, x squared equals 1 third, so x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 third. You need to simplify that. Square root of 1 is 1 over the square root of 3. You need to rationalize that. Multiply top and bottom by root 3. So I end up with x is equal to plus or minus root 3 over just 3. Next one is quadratic in nature, meaning I can try AC factoring on it. 3 times 2 is 6, negative 6 there. Factors that make a negative 1, 1 and 6 doesn't work. How about 2 and 3? To make a negative 1, 2 is positive, 3 is negative. We split this. 3x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 3x squared minus 2. If I've done this right, we now have four terms. These two have x squared in common, leaving us with 3x squared plus 2. These two have a negative 1 in common, so factor that out, leaving us with 3x squared plus 2. So factoring this, I basically have 3x squared plus 2 times x squared minus 1. Now x squared minus 1 can factor further, but if all you did was take each of these groups, for this one, I would get the square root of 1, so don't forget the plus or minus 1 with that. I should have four zeros, right? For this one, be careful because you're going to get x squared is equal to negative 2 thirds. So when I square root that, what I should end up with is, we'll have to rationalize top and bottom again, but what I should end up with is an imaginary, so plus or minus i root 6 over 3. So make sure you can rationalize that. Make sure the square root of negative, we get an imaginary solution. But I'll, these are the answers I want. Plus or minus 1 and plus or minus i root 6 over 3. We can use a calculator. So how do I do, first of all, the list of all rational solutions? Uh, factors of p, factors of q. p is 2. So factors of q, I'm sorry, of p, would just be 1, 2. Factors of q, q is just 1. So all possible rational solutions are plus or minus p over q, plus or minus 1 over 1, and plus or minus 2 over 1. I don't really need the over 1, do I? If there are more q's, we keep going, but that's it for our first point. From here, I'm going to find the real zeros using the calculator. So x cubed minus 4x squared. x cubed minus 4x squared, where are we at? Minus 5x plus 2. Now I know this is x cubed, so it should have up to three zeros. I can see all three zeros. How do I find those zeros? Menu 
analyze zeros. Found one. Menu, analyze zero. Choose before, choose after. Now these look like they're writing over each other, so let me do one at a time or kind of move them away from each other. Menu, analyze zeros. So this is what I'm looking for, negative 1.250. Three, uh, 0.3230 and 4.930. Any local maxes and mins? This is an X cube, so it actually has no min and no max, but here it reaches a little point. That's what we call a local max. How do I get that? Analyze graph for a max. Choose before, choose after, write that down. Negative 0.523, comma, what was it, 3.38? The second one, because I know I have an x cubed, it's going to scoop down. I can try to scoop down until we find it, but what I'll probably need to do is just zoom out. So zooming out, if I just click here in the center, I can keep doing that until I finally get a little lower peak there. So then I can analyze the graph for the minimum. And it stops there at 3.19, negative 22.2. So just verifying we can actually use our calculator to find these values. That's going to help you a lot in calculus, okay? Uh, given, I give the x and y intercepts, the vertex, the domain, the range of the following function. Geez, that's a lot, right? Could I do all that by hand? You bet. I know how to do all that by hand. Do I want to? No. You're allowed to use your calculator. So I'm going to do this. Negative 4x squared minus 5x plus 1. So what do we say? Negative 4x squared minus 5x minus 1. I'll double check those numbers. It's plus 4. Change that from a minus 1 to a plus 1. Shifted it up a little bit. All right. And, oh, I kind of sketched the graph already. That's pretty cool. So I can just go, you well, know, it kind of looks like this. Not done. What are the x-intercepts? Well, menu, analyze graph, zeros. Negative 1.430. Where's the second one? No, nope, wrong thing. Um, analyze graph 0 0.1750 what else do we need we need the vertex point six negative point six two five And what was the y value on that? 2.56. And last, we need the y-intercepts. Um, I'm just going to go, geez, if x is 0, 4 times 0 squared, 5 times 0, how about just 1? If you weren't sure, you can see it crosses at 1. If you weren't sure, you can add a table and go where x is 0, too far. Where x is 0, y is 1. Y-intercept. Did I give the x and y-intercept? Yes. Did I get the vertex? Yes. Did I do the domain and range? No. Our domain, 
Craft goes left forever, right forever. Range. Graph goes down forever. But it stops at what y value? Well, ask the vertex. What's the y value? 2.56. So that would be the range, except this needs to be a bracket here. Ah, there's a lot of these, right? Let's keep going. Let's start with the easy part of this. It is a cubic. It looks cubic. I see two zeros. One's at negative one, one's at two. So what are my groups? Well, if x equals negative one, this group is x plus one. If x equals two, this group is x minus two. Why is that not my answer? Well, first of all, this would make x squared, and we already said this was cubic. Second, at the two, it has a multiplicity, multiplicity factor of two, which means that acts like a parabola. It means a two there. Now this would be x cubed, so there's our function f of x, right? Sort of, not if you want full credit. If you want full credit, we need to use the point to find a, because really this is some a we don't know. But since I have an x and a y, or an x and an f and an x, then what I can do is take those numbers and plug them in. That in place of x, and that in place of the y or the f of x. So negative 4 equals a times 3 plus 1, 3 minus 2. Negative 4 is equal to a times 4 times 1 squared. Negative 4 is equal to a times 4. a is equal to negative 1. So what's our final graph really? f of x is equal to negative 1 times x plus 1, x minus 2 squared. That will be full credit. List all the rational zeros, factor completely the graph. All right, p's over q's. So p's and q's. Factors of 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, q is just 1. So all of our p's over q's would just be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. How am I going to check? Uh, synthetically. Let's start with x equals 4. Our coefficients 1, 1, negative 13, negative 25, negative 12. 1, 2, negative 11, negative 36, not a 0. 1 didn't work. It's okay. Let's check. Negative 1. 1, 0, negative 13, negative 12, ding, ding, ding. We just factored out, I did not want to say factor completely, wasn't it? So we got x equals negative 1, or we factored out an x plus 1. We found our first 0. What I'm left with is everything down on a degree, so that's what x cubed minus 13x minus 12. Keep going. I'm now taking these coefficients that were left. 1, 0, negative 13, negative 12. Don't forget the 0 here. And I'm going to keep going. Now we just checked 1. Does that mean 1 is wrong? Or negative 1? No, we could actually check it again. 
1, negative 1, negative 12, ding, ding, ding. We found two zeros. Don't forget that just because it equaled negative 1 once doesn't mean you shouldn't check it again. So now what, what have we factored out? Well, we factored out x plus 1 twice. What are we left with? x squared minus x minus 12. What's left is quadratic, so I would just factor that using my factoring techniques. I got minus 4 and plus 3. So now we have all four of our zeros. We have negative 1, negative 1, 4, and 3. We found the zeros, we factored it, graph it. It crosses at negative 1, 4, and 3. Even function, positive, starts by going up, ends by going up. At the negative 1, it is a double solution, a double root, or a, with a factor a multiplicity of 2, which means it bounces off there. The other two have a multiplicity of 1, so it just goes through them. And this really should be a little more kind of straight. It looks a little too cubic, but I'd be okay with that. And you could always check this in your graph if you're not sure. But you need to sketch a graph. Find the zeros, sketch the graph, factor completely. I'm looking for all three of these for full credit. This one just says solve. Um, I would see if this factors. I don't know that it does. Four times negative one is what is that? Negative four. And so factors of four that make nine. What are four, two, and two? I could try to complete the square on this. I could run it through the quadratic formula. But don't I have access to this? So why not just graph this? On one. Why not just graph this? With what? So 4x squared minus, minus 9x minus 1. And I can find the zeros. using technology. So negative 1.06 and 2.36. Negative 1, negative 0 0.106. And what was the other one at? 2.36. So here's my graph, right? Where does it equal zero? When x equals negative 0 0.106 and positive 2.36. Now, could I have ran that through the entire quadratic formula, right? Gone x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a? Sure. And I would have got these two numbers. <laughs> so that's your choice. Where is the graph less than 0? Huh? In the middle. So between those two numbers. So between negative 0 0.106 and 2.36, since there's no equal, how about parentheses? Where is it greater than? To the right and to the left. So to the left of that would be 
negative infinity to negative 0 0.106, parenthesis bracket, or bracket 2.36 to infinity. And then I actually just added a couple questions to the review after I gave it to you. So this is not, I mean, it'll be part of the test, but I'll probably be lenient on this because I didn't have it in your initial review. But if you get this, you'll have uh, some potential for extra credit. So solve this by completing the square. Oh, where's all this mess? Looks like I didn't quite. Oh, C should be gone. That's it. That's the only issue. Okay. This must have been where I was working on it. I didn't know it was there earlier, but I'll be okay. Um, I'll review these as well. So looking at this, solve by completing the square. This sucker is a mess. I do not want to complete the square on this unless this A is a 1. Okay. So actually, here's what I'm going to do. 4x squared minus 16x plus 5. Okay, when I complete the square, I just use the A and the B. So I'm not going to use the C. I'm going to move that away. So 4x squared minus 16x equals negative 5. Am I ready to complete the square? No, I want this to be a 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 4. Makes x squared minus 4x negative 5 fourths. How do I complete the square on this? Well, this actually is not too bad. x minus 2 squared. Just half of that term. Squaring that, I need to add 4. This time I'm going to do it to both sides. The reason I have this over here is because I have access to the calculator. So if you struggle with you know, knowing that this is 11 fourths, then you can do negative 5 fourths plus 4 in your calculator. Negative 5 fourths plus 4. And it will give you 11 fourths. Now, how do I solve it? It's said solve by completing the square. So I'm expecting a square root. I tried to keep this relatively simple. So I'm left with x minus 2 equals plus or minus. Square root of 11 over about 2. And last, add 2. 2 plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2. That would be full credit. That is a skill you need for calculus, so we're reviewing it now. 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. Uh, could I get that answer with the quadratic formula? Yes. I don't think it would be any easier, and it won't be full credit. I want you to complete the square on that. So I'm using factoring techniques. This we did talk about. I did just put a couple more examples. So this right here, this first one, would be an AC. 6 times 6. I'll create some space here. So 6 times 6 would be 36. Factors of 36 that make a 13. 1 and 36. 2 and 18. What just happened? There we go. 3 and 12. No. 4 and 9. There we go. And then we end up with 6 and 6. But there's our 13. To make a negative 13, they need to both be negative. So we have 6x to the 4th minus 4x squared minus 9x squared plus 6. First two have one in common. Leaving us with 3x squared minus 2. Second two have a negative 3 in common, leaving us with 3x squared minus 2. Pulling out what they have in common leaves us with 2x squared minus 3. So now how can I solve this? Setting each of these equal to 0, I would get x squared is equal to 2 thirds. On this one, x squared is equal to 3 halves. When we square root it, you have to rationalize it. So x is equal to plus or minus 
what is that, the square root of 6 over 3, x is equal to plus or minus, what is that, the square root of 6 over 2. That's what I would expect. If this is where you're getting caught at the end, again, depending on your calculator that you're allowed to use in this section, I could do the square root of 2 thirds. And it will simplify that for you. I can do the square root of 3 over 2. And it will simplify that for you. So don't let be that, that be the thing that destroys you here, okay? Last but not least, these are here. This looks like it's just a fixed version of the one I wanted earlier. Okay? Take these two and these two. First two have one in common, leaving us with 3x minus 1. This one pull out the negative 1, leaves us with 3x minus 1. So we're left with, actually, I don't know if this is the same as the last one, but 2x squared minus 1 times 3x minus 1. Setting each group equal to 0, I get x equals 1 third. From this one, I get x squared equals 1 half. So when I square root that, x equals plus or minus, what is that root, 2 over 2? Find all three answers using factoring techniques, okay? 